Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we hope to make this short story session as lively and as engrossing as short stories can be. So uh, we can start now. Hello, Humra. Nice to see you. Yeah, and hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Gita. We yeah, haven't met, uh, but I know you're, uh, I've read your uh, writing. And uh, Janvi, of course, is a friend and a co-writer from Bangalore. So we'll start this session by, uh, I thought we could talk about two things. One is, what is the difference? What is the amount of effort and difference you have to put in between writing a short story and a longer work of fiction? And secondly, how do you sell short stories? Is it more difficult? Is it easier? So can I start with you, Humra? Would you like to talk about this? How, yeah. What is the difference in technique and what is the difference in uh, selling your work, short story in long? Yeah. You know, um, uh, short stories actually come very, very... Um, what should I say, very spontaneously, because, you know, you just see a situation or you go through a experience yourself and you just want to put it down. Now, it depends on you whether you want to stretch it further into a novella or novel or you want to just close it at some end. What do you feel? See, as a writer, it's very, um, these things are very personal because I can uh, catch hold of a situation or an experience and make it into a big, big, long novel or I can just leave it for the reader you know just make it a thing and a lot depends on the mood you know your own emotions involved because uh, every writer I mean as you all know uh, cannot do without uh, that emotional uh, um, backup or is there I mean you have to be so involved and so passionate about a thing or a situation that you want to actually just write uh, put it down and I don't know why um, uh, in our country short stories are not taken very seriously I mean in the sense uh, if you're a novel um, if you've done a novel then people say oh she's done a novel but if you've done even five short stories say, oh, you know that short story writer I mean there is a um, there is a marked difference is what I feel. Although short stories can carry as much as a novel, maybe more. Because it's just not one short story published in your volume. They're about at least 10, 15, 20. So it takes a lot out of you. I mean, all your emotions are there. And um, no writer can write in a vacuum. You know, you have to go through that whole process. And you have to be in the middle of a lot of happenings. You can't just, and, and, and the present or what is happening does affect the writer. Otherwise, uh, you, I mean, it's difficult to write then. So, and according to me, there's nothing called pure fiction. I mean, this leads to that. Because if you don't experience or see or um, hear all that pain or whatever, uh, you cannot write. I mean, uh, it's very difficult. So this is what I feel uh, Janvi can add her. Uh, own thing. I mean, this is what I really feel, you know. Okay. Janvi, what do you feel? Uh, for me, unlike Humra, I have to put a lot of effort into my short fiction. Uh, it takes me sometimes, it's not spontaneous, certainly. It takes maybe two, three, even five months for one short story to be completed. Um, and um, yes, it is, it is a um, a slice of life kind of thing, a short story. It's um, you, you, it's you're opening a window into a larger story. So you give a glimpse of something, a, a short insight into something. But for me, I um, work at it um, technically. The crafting I find possibly harder than a novel because it's a very short, um, it's a very short length. You have a very small canvas, and um, you have to get everything right straight up. You have to get the setting right. And by setting, I mean uh, not just the location, not just the city, the the, the timing, the season. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. If you want to write a, a, a sadder short story, set it in winter, you know. So you have to think through your whole setting. And um, you have to think through the social setting. What's the story about? Uh, what's the theme? Is it is it um, um, a social conflict story? You know, you have to think of the aim very, very clearly because your intent in the short story has to come across very quickly for, to, to grip the reader. Uh, then the characters, of course, have to be so well-developed 
you don't have as, as much space as in a novel to meander. So mm-hmm. you can build up your character in a novel over a long time. You can uh, meander. You have a lot of room for error. A short story is much, much uh, less forgiving. Mm-hmm. So you have to get your character so clearly um, right, right away to grip your reader. Uh, and of course, the theme, where is it going? And um, how will the story develop the pace of the story? Um, it's, it's technically, I would say, Gita, since you asked the question, much harder to write a good short story as compared to a good novel. And um, I started with short fiction uh, to, to address your, the other half of your question as to why do they sell, do they sell at all? Uh, I, was, I had a very brave publisher, I was lucky. So um, Penguin India picked up 14 of my first, um, uh, I was an unknown writer then, this is 10, 12 years ago, and uh, said, we'll, we'll do a collection. Of course, they first asked, do you have a novel ready? I said, no. So do you have enough to make a collection, a short story a collection? I said, yes, I do. And they were brave enough to um, pick up an unknown writer and publish because um, it's another thing to be a known novelist and then you write short fiction. It's easier to sell you. But here they were with me, no name, but they picked it up. It did well. And um, it is a particular, particular passion of mine, short fiction. And when you say, does it sell? Publishers say it doesn't sell, but then readers read. I'm sure as readers, all of you would happily pick up a collection. And particularly in today's day, uh, if I speak for myself, I may not have the time to go through a lengthy novel, but I do have that time for a short burst. Um, if, if I can read on, a, on an e-device also, quickly read a short story, right? So this is um, a sort of um, strange paradox. And um, uh, I would feel as a writer, the market is there, but then publishers say there's no market for short fiction unless you're an acclaimed author. So um, what do we do? And like Humra said, in, in India, we're not particularly respected. The short form is not particularly respected, uh, except in our bhasha languages. If you look at uh, regional literature, you'll find in Assam, Bengal, Maharashtra, Karnataka, short fiction um, really has respect. I'm sure you, if you read in your mother tongues, you'll see that short fiction has great respect. They published well, the authors are well known, but not so much in Indian writing in English. But, but if you go to somewhere like the United States, short fiction is thriving. It is a very healthy form. It has huge respect. Uh, we all know Salinger. Uh, we all know Alice Munro. We all know a Richard Ford, you know. Uh, but I wonder why we can't achieve that level of um, respect here for the short fiction. So this, this has always foxed me, and I don't know where the answer is, where it lies. Thank you, Janvi and Humra. I would uh, say, you know, uh, uh, my foray into short fiction itself began because as a journalist, uh, I came across so many stories, but there are some stories which you cannot narrate in an article because, you know, you need to protect a person's uh, privacy. You cannot uh, make it too sensational or you, you, you have to see that the person whom you're writing about, particularly if it's a, a murder or a kidnapping or some rape or something which is very intense and very dramatic, but you cannot... Uh, publish it in the form of an article because you, the person who is involved, their privacy has to be protected. So that is how, when I was still a, a fairly young journalist, that I started thinking that, you know, what I cannot publish in the form of an article, maybe I can write it as a fictional story, a short one, and put enough. Uh, what do you say, blurring around it so that you cannot recognize to who who is the person involved in it. So that is how I actually wrote my first short story about a girl. uh, I was living in Kerala at that time and about a girl who was uh, in a fishing village and who was kidnapped and taken away to Gujarat in order to uh, work at their fish processing units. And uh, they didn't even know, her parents didn't know where she had gone. So it was a long thing. And when I uh, came across that story and I decided that I would not publish, I I would not publish it as an article. And I put all the other details into a short story and it was published. And I can tell you one, another thing was in those days, magazines were much more popular and they had, you know, like uh, Deccan Herald and... uh, you know, so many magazines, Femina, Eve's Weekly, all of them had space for short stories. So I was able to write quite a few short stories at that time and more like even my, whether it's uh, 
I write both fiction and non-fiction because basically I'm a journalist. But even my fiction is based on my non-fiction in the sense that my uh, journalistic uh, endeavors get translated into stories. So if I'm going to write about some particular incident which happened, it's easier to write a short story than to make it into a big novel because then the, in the novel you cannot really, uh, you cannot, what do I say, put all the blurring around the person so well because somewhere or the other, that person's identity might come out. So the short story is much easier to do. Then regarding the sale of short stories, I, another question I wanted to ask, uh, I'll ask you, Humra, first. Do you think if you publish an anthology of your own fiction, mm. it sells better? Or if you are part of a bigger anthology of like, you know, South Asian fiction or something, which do you think gives you, I'm not talking purely in terms of commerce, but uh, gives you more uh, focus on your story and on you? Oh, I, th I think depends who's publishing. That's very important because that uh, reach then depends on you know who's publishing your works. But um, again, you know, because um, uh, after a certain stage, you're writing a lot for your own self in a way. I mean, I'm really, when I've done a story, I'm not bothered whether 10 people are going to read or 1,000 or 1 lakh or maybe just me. <laughs> so uh, it's a lot of, you know, taking out your... Um, emotion so that part i'm not but i think the collective um, anthologies uh, or i mean just not my own if there are 10 other authors they do have a wider readership because of that you know collective thing but end of the day i think most writers uh, want to write i mean it's not that uh, there's that urge otherwise we wouldn't be writing because it really saps you know if um, I write about a child in Kashmir, uh, about 10 of my short stories are based in the valley on children. I know the situation. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen a child dying. I couldn't do anything except maybe report because I, like you, I'm a journalist and uh, I mean, and a writer. So it's a combination, uh, but it saps because in the whole sequence, I have to build up, put it change the name of the child, obviously, but it saps because it takes me back to that uh, sorrow, you know, that sort of that entire village or the child and the family. So it is a sapping thing. I mean, it's not, uh, um, and there's more to it than just writing. A lot of your own emotions come out and you're in a different world as such. So this is what I really feel. And um, uh, obviously the, um, the, uh, logical conclusion is that the book or the short story has to be published so that people read okay that this is also on you know in various various pockets or locales um, of our country so these are the realities uh, and as a writer one has to bring them out either through journalistic works or through um, fiction uh, so-called so-called fiction uh, uh, writing so this is what i feel <laughs> I think to answer your question about whether uh, an anthology of various writers sells better than um, one of your own, of course, I think when it's a collection of various authors, there's more exposure. You have each each author comes with their own readership, and um, you you when you see one your your favorite author out there, you tend to pick up the book so that you you feed into people's readership. But having said that, I think every author I don't know how Umrah feels or you feel Gita. Uh, we would like to have that collection of our own, right? I mean, it's, it's always nice to be part of um, an anthology and all of us have been part of various anthologies with our colleagues and co-writers and that's a different thrill because um, it's kind of a team effort. It's kind of, um, you all get together on stage, 10 of you on stage and it's, it's fun, it's a fun thing. But end of day, we are serious writers, literary fiction writers and you want to see your name on that, on that collection. And it's very satisfying um, when that happens. But as Humra said, it is very exhausting. It's any kind of writing. So when children come to me, young children say, I want to be a writer. I'm like, please really think very deeply about it. It's really not easy. I mean, I know you do uh, an essay in class or a short fiction composition in college and it feels easy. It seems easy. But uh, really, when you want to um, write at that level uh, where you want to make it a career, it is extremely exhausting because um, 
while uh, I don't tend to look, um, convert incidents into fictionalize them and make them into short fiction, um, I tend to, I think most writers tend to write from lived experience. Uh, people always ask me, are your, are your characters fictional? Is, is, is that novel uh, fictional? Is it, is it um, autofiction? Is it, is it from your life? Everything we write is from our life. Uh, in the sense, if I've never, for example, um, sat down and watched a sunrise, how would I describe it? You, ca you can't Google those feelings. You can't Google those colors. You can't Google those emotions. Uh, if I've never tasted um, chocolate ice cream, how would I describe it? So in a sense, what we write is from our lived experience. Uh, personally, I try not to use uh, incidents or characters from real life because um, I think the real challenge to a writer of fiction is to really use your imagination and your creativity. And... Um, it's very exhausting. And uh, I was just talking to Geeta before this session started saying it's also very exhausting because um, it's a discipline. You don't have to write. Uh, a lot of us are fortunate enough in that we don't write for the money because in India, you cannot make a living out of writing. So I think when we write, we begin to accept that we either have uh, a, a primary career. And I tell all young people who start out that please have a primary career. Um, don't think you can live off your writing at all. Unless you're writing nonfiction, then it's possible. Or if you're writing very popular fiction, if you're wanting mm -hmm. to write anything other than that, poetry or short fiction or literary fiction, you can't make a living. Um, so, right. So, so most of us don't write for money. We write for the passion of it. We write for the pleasure of it. We write for the compulsion of it. I mean, um, unless I see Sabin nodding there, there's an author in the second row. Uh, unless we write, sometimes we don't feel all right. I mean, unless you've, mm. got the, you've done that page a day or you've done that uh, novel a year, um, you feel all's not right with the world. But to get up every day and look at that screen and create something worth creating is so difficult, is so difficult. I, in fact, I envy other creative artists. I, I feel a painter or, a, or an actor or a performance uh, artist, a performance poet gets out there and, you know, it's an, it's an instant reaction from your audience. It, it, it's, it's such a compelling uh, in-your-face kind of thing. Sure. Writing a novel building up that mood, building up that style, uh, keeping continuity. If, if somebody was wearing a red dress in one scene and you come to it two years later, you make sure that it's still a red dress, you know, um, it's such an exhausting task and um, you don't have to do it, right? There's, there's no one sitting there saying, get up at nine and clock out at five and start at nine. So I find, because um, I, I write, I, I think I'm, um, look at real life first, my other obligations, duties, and I uh, look at writing a little um, as sort of on the back burner. It's, it's hard even to get out there sometimes. So I'm a slow writer and um, it's exhausting. As Humra said, when you're writing a novel or a, a short story, you actually live the emotion. So if it's um, um, a bad relationship story, if it's um, like an abduction like Gita talked about, you actually feel that emotion. You actually are sapped by end of day. So um, that's really what the writing experience is all about. And it's, it's not an easy one. Thank you. Uh, I think the... I also wanted to ask, you know, the, do you get a core of an idea and then make it into a short story and then suddenly feel that, you know, it could perhaps be extend, expanded, the emotions, the scene, everything is just asking to be made into a longer novel. Have you ever, Homra, for instance, taken a short story and made it into a longer story, a longer format, maybe even a novel? Have you? Uh, no, not really, because I was tempted to <laughs> one yeah. or two uh, short stories, but then I felt uh, that it wouldn't really come. I mean, I, I would stretch it, but I wanted to end it at a particular um, situation, you know. I could have, I mean, if I, even now, I mean, at times I read as, oh God, you know, I should have stretched it further, you know, till the... Uh, you know, till they part or they depart or whatever, but I left it at a uh, uh, at a very strange situation because I thought let the reader decide. You know whether the two are going to be in love forever or they'll just end everything. Um, and um, uh, no, I feel a short story has its own end. I mean, a novel. If you have in the mind, okay, that I'm going to write a novel, then you build your characters accordingly. You know, you, you can do 200 pages and then you say, okay, it's okay. But this in 10, 9, 10 pages, I feel it's okay. I mean, I've done my bit, let the reader decide. Uh, but it is, um, there's some sort of temptation at times. 
so uh, but short stories i've done about uh, three collections so um, i've left it i mean i didn't want to carry it further i thought it's uh, reached its end why i asked was um, uh, one of the full length fiction novels which i wrote it's called color of gold and it's set in a gold mining town that's where i grew up mm-hmm. and uh, so to start with i set it in the era when i was growing up which was like in the 50s and 60s and when you know the colonial past had not quite mm-hmm. left it mm-hmm. and uh, that came to me very vividly so i first wrote this short story and i published it long ago in mm-hmm. i think in deccan herald or uh, something and then later on when i looked at it i thought you know there's so much i haven't said in this mm-hmm. and then you know the characters started coming in other people whom i had known and then uh, you know it became like it stretched over 100 years in my mind mm-hmm. and then i put it down and it uh, became a a good length novel so that short story which was the core mm-hmm. but uh, you cannot even recognize that core in what happened ultimately to it and what i write i feel with writing fiction as opposed to journalistic pieces where you have to stick to fact and you cannot go into mm-hmm. fiction but fiction just allows your mind, mind to take over be. you can make anything you like and the characters seem to make themselves i mean i don't know this is a very weird thing that when you start you you don't have an idea of what this character is going to become but by the end the characters become something else in a short story maybe it doesn't the character doesn't have time to grow into their full length but okay. then you as you said it's a slice of life thing so that's where it should end but i'm i mean i was curious because this happened to me and i'm wondering janvi has it ever happened to you because you write both short stories and uh, long fiction i think for me funnily enough it works the other way uh. i think i'm constantly trying to make my novels into a short story uh, oh. because for me uh, for me i i write very um sort of compact precise for me it's all about precision it's about the minimal aspect of it and a few few words i feel uh, work better than a whole, uh, a whole lot of unnecessary words in fact my last novel started out at 80000 words and by the time i redraft and cut it down it became 50000 so i got off almost one third of the novel and it became almost a novella so i'm always for precision minimal and um, for forcing the reader to engage with the text i'm not going to spell it out for you and uh, it's i think it's an interactive experience wherein the reader comes into the short story and actually interprets the emotions the subtext the undercurrents and uh, that's the thrill of it i enjoy reading like that i enjoy a short story writer who challenges me and i get to work with him or her and um that's the only way i feel i'm completely alert i'm completely um, engrossed and meshed in the story and i would like my reader to do the same so i give him or her the, the respect of minimal um sort of cues and expect them to read along as they wish and you get fantastic responses i mean i've had i've had the same story interpreted two or three ways and i've had endings which um, i didn't think of myself either and i said yeah i could have gone that way so for me it's other way around i'm, I'm never tempted except once there's one story of mine which somebody wanted to make into a movie and uh, they said then this has to be expanded um, it didn't work out in the end but um then i looked at the story and said this possibly i can flesh it out i can make it into a novella perhaps and my my short fiction is long so my short story sometimes can run into 10000 words so i feel um, i feel i'm on the verge i'm i i kind of work both way but with precision with saying a little less than one needs to actually i think that's a challenge um tomra you said something about i think being a woman and a writer uh you were saying there are other you know things you have to take care of it's not just your writing you have your domestic uh, issues you have many other things and i'm sure janvi is and i have also had this conversation several times and uh, i remember in uh, one uh, woman writer whom i knew who was married to a very busy doctor actually and she used to say you know my uh, right she was a well known novelist in malayalam and she used to say you know my uh, work always takes the back seat because i don't earn as much money as my husband does and therefore it is not considered the primary 
career option in our house. So one day she laughingly told me the only time I get to think about my uh, plot and how to flesh it out is when I'm sitting in the bathroom. Because that's the only private time I have in my life. Otherwise, there are children, there are domestic duties, there are so many other things that I have to take care of. What would be your comment on this, Humra? Oh, see, now my children are settled, thankfully. So, but when yeah, we were yeah. growing up, they were more like friends. I mean, I remember I bought a typewriter a long time back in the 90s. I didn't know how to type. So my daughter went to a typing school and she said, don't worry, I'm going to learn. So she used to type out, you know, my writing stuff. So um, that was actually, and while they used to sit and do their homework, I used to do my writing, but that time I didn't write much. In the sense, okay, I was more like a journalistic sort of thing. But uh, last 20 years, uh, writing is like my life. After my children settled and they moved to their own homes and different cities. So writing has actually kept me going. Earlier, it was the children who kept me alive and going. And after they got married and moved to their own home. So it's writing that's actually taking care of me of my emotions, the day I don't write, I feel there's something missing, you know. I mean, I could go window shopping, I could maybe cook two other dishes, usually I make one, <laughs> but uh, because it's just me and myself. But uh, if I don't write, I feel there's something is um, uh, missing in my life, you know. I mean, uh, I don't know how to describe, but at the end of the day, I feel, oh God, you know, I've uh, not actually, the day should not end without me not writing really something. writing something you know where there's even five pages so that's kept me going because I remember once uh, Mr. Gulzar Sahab told me he said you know I went I had interviewed him so he said that uh, you know I've gone I mean I asked him that you've gone through so many you know personal lows highs and etc so he said yes but writing is like uh, riding a tigress it takes care of you I mean, you have, but you, it's a, it's a process, you know, it's not that one day you start writing. It takes you you have to train yourself, you know, at times uh, one is very lonely. I mean, uh, as a writer, one is lonely uh, because you have to be a little away from that human, human company so that you can actually get involved in your writing. So it's a, it's a tough thing. You are left lonely. You are left to fend for yourself. Yet it keeps you going. I mean, there is an emotional backup. I don't know how to describe, but um, uh, it's, it's, um, it's a little different sort of thing. Uh, and it makes you, your day complete. Even if I write five pages, four pages, I feel, I, okay, I've done my bit for the day. I can then sleep, actually. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I think at one point of time, you don't even bother whether anybody is going to publish you or not. Yeah. It's just that you're actually writing for yourself, yeah. especially, you know, you write and it's like a form of meditation, uh, a soothing kind of thing. Uh -huh. It's like your own uh, emotions coming out on paper. Let's put it mm -hmm. that way. Otherwise, you would keep them to yourself, and especially if you're doing a short story. You know, I can take 20 days to do a story. I can even do it in uh, two hours. But I obviously, I have to then brush it up, etc. But I have to take that out, you know. If I've seen a very, very horrifying situation is bothering me, I say, okay, then just somehow make it into a story. But of course, it's sapping at the end of the day. But it gives you that emotional uh, cushioning. Uh, I think that's why a lot of writers um, do get used to writing. Yeah. It's a process. No? Okay. Would you like to say a few words? I think the... just a quick line because we're out of time. To say yes, I think as a woman, it's that much harder to write because um, we're seen as someone who, uh, especially if you're not, um, don't have that primary career, you're a full-time writer and uh, you expect to do everything around the house. And I built my writing around the house because it's too much to fight the system because um, from your domestic staff to your children, to your friends, it's like, come for a coffee. No, I'm on my first paragraph. Why can't you come for a coffee? You can go back to that paragraph later. No, I'm a, the, the line will be lost forever. You know, no one understands oh, that. So it is, it is harder. But um, there's joy in it, there's satisfaction, and um, there's for the reader and the writer, and that's why we're all here. So, Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, I think we are thank out you so of time. Much.
and uh, i hope all of you have also enjoyed the session and got something from it thank you thank you humra thank, thank you, you. Bye. thank bye. you bye.